traditionally, diagnostic methods in TB focus on the demonstration of the bacterium or its products in human samples. But unfortunately, it is not always possible to get suitable samples. For instance, in children, um, we struggle to get adequate sputum samples and uh, diagnosis may be delayed or not possible at all. Our project focuses on host markers, or so-called biosignatures, that can be measured in the blood. And these signatures are made up of inflammatory proteins that are specific to active tuberculosis disease. So in the first phase of the project, we are trying to get an optimal set of host markers or host proteins that make up a sensitive and specific biosignature. In the second part of the project, we will try to develop a point-of-care test that can be used in the periphery and will lead to very rapid diagnosis and rapid initiation of treatment, thereby um, decreasing the possibility that the bacterium is spread to other people. This area is where the EGCP supported project activities are going on. So this project, the African European Tuberculosis Consortium project, is going on under the big directorate of EHNRI, which is Infectious and Non-Infectious Research Directorate. EHNRI is one of the seven sites of the ATBC project. So we really we are really glad to work together with all this big consortium where we used to learn techniques, we used to learn knowledge, so experience sharing is really great, so we are highly delighted to be in the concert team. TB treatment is quite a long treatment. It's six months, and it's sometimes difficult to maintain adherence to this, uh, this, uh, this treatment. So what we try as a consortium is scientifically achieve whether it would be possible to do it shorter, like four or three months even. There were three independent uh, consortia who had uh, three different drugs that we wanted to develop further. But we have learned, I think, over the last two years very rapidly that uh, the time basically is over where a, a company or a single organization can develop one drug by itself. Yeah. To be drugs is a treatment is always a combination of more than one drug. We have up to 750 different uh, combinations that are possible. So this is a major undertaking to find out which of those combinations is the best combination. And there are in principle four large networks in the world who can conduct these kind of studies and uh, Panacea is one of them. The Panacea Consortium has 11 African sites in it. There was some sites which had clinical trial experience in HIV or malaria, but very little experience of, of tuberculosis. And other sites which had got long-standing TB research, but hadn't really done clinical trials to GCP standards. The product is called MVA85A. MVA stands for Modified Vaccinia Ankara which is a virus vector on which um, is incorporated the TB antigen known as antigen 85A. So our trial that's funded by the EDCTP is a phase 2B clinical trial in HIV infected adults and so we plan to vaccinate 1400 people as I said, HIV infected adults in both Senegal at Shula Dontek in Dakar and at Kailicha in the Cape Town Township in South Africa. Um, and half will receive placebo and half the MVA 85A. And we hope to therefore look at efficacy of this vaccine. But by doing it in a HIV subject, what you will see in 10 years in normal subject, you can see it in one year. Because of the rapid progression of TB in HIV subjects, through this uh, study, we are able to have it 
a peep through the window to so to show or to know the efficacy or how effective this vaccine is going to be in the general. And I think that so far the EDCTP funding for capacity building has greatly benefited both the clinical sites that we're working with yes. and is an area that they should continue with developing African clinical trial sites. I agree. As, as you see, there are a number of equipment to conduct clinical trial, TB vaccine uh, trial from SSI group, which is antigen 5 b Sussex fusion protein. So it's a phase two clinical trial. Previously, we were just alone. We were not collaborating with our partners in Africa. Different labs in Africa have uh, a relationship with Europeans or Americans or Asian countries. But now, through EDCP, I would say, we have got the chance to see our neighbors. The clinical trial capacity, of course, EDCP is funding us to do a clinical trial like the vaccine trial. But the GCP training, the ethics training, the lab strengthening and the partnership that we have built is encouraging other partners to come and work with us on clinical trials. It is, it is important for African sites to use complementary skills to strengthen each other's capacities. So what I call upon for the African scientists to do is collaborate, network, and make sure you influence your own governments to take responsibility for research. But most important is that science cannot be done alone. It has to be done with international partnership. There is enormous hunger for new knowledge and capacity development for individual scientists and institutions. I think this is a very exciting time for research in Africa. Mm -hmm.